ourselves, we save one another. That quote reminds me of my friendship with Betsy Watson. I first met Betsy when she was the manager of the Gables. She was responsible for seeing, overseeing what was going on with the residents and the caregivers and the kitchen staff and the gardeners and the recreational people. She also raised three sons. That to me says a lot about who she is and what she's capable of. The place where we intersected was play and theater. I didn't, Betsy was an acquaintance, but we were never really close because we moved through the world in very different ways. Nine years ago, I left Ojai because the cost of living was too high. So I went to New Mexico. The cost of living was indeed lower, but I was a fish out of water and nobody was supporting the work I wanted to do. As a result, I came back to Ojai four times that year to teach writing and performance at Gallery 525. On my last trip here, I was really sick. I should have stayed home, but I needed the money. And when I got here, the place I was supposed to stay fell apart at the last second. And I was like, oh no, where am I gonna stay? And I thought of all of these people I might impose upon. And then I came to Betsy and I thought, oh, we're not close friends. She knows who I am. But I gave her a call anyway. She said, yes, come up. So I spent the weekend on her couch. When I woke up the first day, it was such a, a nice feeling in the house. People were stopping by to go for walks together and have coffee. And it was a wonderful sense of community. When it was time for me to teach my class, she said, here, take my car keys. Use my car for the weekend. You're gonna need it. And then she handed me a lunch. Oh my God. When I got back to New Mexico, I wrote an email and I said, I really need to come back. If you uh, hear of anything within my price range, which is not Ojai prices, please let me know. Three months later, she sent me an email and said, my housemate is moving out. Her housemate was a woman who had cancer and couldn't work and couldn't provide for herself, so Betsy took her in until she was healthy and strong. That's who Betsy is. Like, well, I talked to my son, and he flew up to help me load the van and come to Ojai. I got a budget van and we were driving along and all of a sudden the skies opened up and all this water came pouring down inside the cab. <laughs> and I said, I can't believe this. And he said, Mom, what don't you understand about the word budget? <laughs> <laughs> when I got here, I was here for two weeks and the rent was due. And New Mexico decided to hang on to my social security check because I had used their services. What? So I was not in a position to pay my very first rent payment. Mm -hmm. I told Betsy, I just said, uh, I need to talk to you about the rent when she was on her way to work. She said, oh, when I get home from work, we'll talk about it. So all day long, I was in a panic attack and I was feeling humiliated. It was like, oh no, the rent talk. So we sat down together outside and I explained the situation and she said, Karen, what can you afford to pay? And I told her a really low amount. She said, we're in this together. Aww. This is not your rental, this is your home. <clears throat> and I can't tell you, I still feel emotional when I think about it because I felt like I had been beat up for two years and all of a sudden she said, this is a safe place your family, I want you to be comfortable here. Oh. She knew I needed to work in order to support myself and get back on my feet. And so I have a very big bedroom and she had somebody build a wall so that I could have privacy so that I could work. Wow. Two weeks after I had been there, I mean two months, <laughs> I had to have a very major surgery. And she was with me every step of the way. Betsy is a very strict vegetarian and I really don't like most of what she eats. It's very <laughs> unusual to me. I'm kind of a meat potatoes person. 
And when I was recovering, she kept very graciously bringing me this food. <laughs> and at one point I said, Betsy, I can't get well this way. I have to have real food. I need real food. And she said, Karen, if this real food has a name, I can get that for you. <laughs> <coughs> Diet isn't the only thing that we didn't have in common. She loves to be out in the community. She loves people. She loves parties. You can't be social enough. She's always um, going someplace to be with somebody. And if I am in a very social situation, I may need a whole day to recover. And what that looks like for me is to go in my bedroom and close the door until my batteries are recharged. Sometimes when I live with people, they think that's very strange. They don't know what to make of it. But Betsy, in the afternoon on such a day, will send me a little text that says, proof of life, please. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing is that she likes to fly everywhere. She flies with her friend Bob all around the world. She goes to the East Coast to visit her family. She goes on retreats to be with her sisters, doing yoga classes and art classes. It took my daughter having a heart <clears throat> surgery for me to get on a plane. So you can see that we don't overlap a lot. But the places where we do overlap is that we both want a harmonious living situation, we want a house that's in order, and we want to respect one another completely. If I get in trouble as a renter, it's usually around landscaping. <laughs> because I come from agricultural people and I'm happiest when my hands are in the dirt. I saw a YouTube video about how to prune guava trees and uh -oh. I thought, I'm going to take that on. Oh, no. <laughs> uh -oh. So I sat, went in the side yard, and I went from 9 to 12 pruning these guava trees. And I had big piles of branches oh, no. all along the walkway. And when Betsy came home, she looked at me and she said, feel better? <laughs> <laughs> Another time there was a shrub that was interfering with the entrance to the garage. And I just thought, who would ever plant a shrub here? It was The roots were too awful for me to dig out. And it, the only place for it, for it to grow was in the wrong direction. So I just pruned that sucker back. <laughs> 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 and again, Betsy came out and said, hmm, what happened here? <laughs> <laughs> so no temper, just very even keel, a wonderful woman. When she stepped down as president of Rotary, I wrote a song for her and performed it for her Rotary Club. And I'm going to give you just a couple verses to give you a taste because the song is too long. It goes like this. My name is Betsy and I'm here to say I serve my community in every way. I picked up trash because I'm not too proud to live my values right out loud. Because I'm a treasure, a living treasure. It is my pleasure to be a treasure. <laughs> Housing commissioner, women's fund, helping seniors, I'm always on the run. When I see injustice, I'm on the front line. I'm holding up a sign trying to make things fine. Now I'm all done with my presidency, but you'll see, you'll be seeing much more of me. Because I always say yes, I don't understand no. Service above self is the way to go. Because I'm a treasure, a living treasure. It is my pleasure to be a treasure. Oh.